Hello, everybody. I'm Matt. I'm joined by Dark Zero. He is the developer of Zero Linux, and we're going to be talking about his distribution today, along with some other Linuxy type stuff. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you are doing with Zero Linux? All right. Um, hello, Matt. Uh, it's uh, it's awesome to be here. Um, I just want to say that Zero Linux is nothing. Uh, I call it the nothing distro. Uh, in my head. It's just uh, Arch with a well-customized and optimized uh, KDE. That's all Zero Linux is. Nothing more, nothing less. It's a blank canvas uh, that will offer users the via tool that we're working on, will be released with, uh, with the September ISO, that will allow all users to shape uh, Zero Linux into whatever, however they, uh, their heart desires. That's the whole point of Zero Linux. Uh, it's very simple, and uh, it's using the best des desktop environment I've ever seen and have ever used. Uh, and as I as I say on all of the interviews, I got introduced to KDE via Manjaro, um, and I've been in love ever since. Now, uh, I just love KDE so much. It's got its issues, uh, its own fair share of issues. Every desktop environment does. Uh, but what I uh, don't understand is why do you have those kind of issues where it doesn't respond and it, it, it explodes in your face? That's what I don't understand because I've been using it for two years now. And the only annoying, uh, on the only type of issues that I've had, small ones like the right click, uh, the compositor, uh, sometimes because I use auto composer uh, extension. Uh, it's, it's supposed to kill the compositor every time you full screen an app so you can get the best performance out of the app, but sometimes it doesn't respond. But that's not the fault of KDE, it's the fault of the extension that I got. Uh, but other than that, there's uh, no major crashes, none of that uh, KWIN crashes and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but maybe it, I've, I've had those kind of issues with Fedora, yes. But other than Fedora, I haven't seen those kind of Well, I have problems with KDE no matter what distribution that I'm on. And it's not that I don't like KDE. KDE is my favorite desktop environment when I use one. Because I like the customization aspect of it. And, I mean, that's kind of my shtick. But the, I mean, I know I'm not the only one that has these problems. Because every time I do a video like that, I get comment after comment in the comment section saying they have the exact same problems. Or problems you know other problems so I know it's not just me but the thing I my biggest problem with KDE when I use it on my production machine is I usually almost always have a window manager also installed and when you want to customize cute apps in a window manager you have to cert set certain environment variables in order for LX appearance and QT5 CT to work and if, if you set that environment variable for Qt5ct, uh, the theming in KDE breaks. Like, you can't use it. Those two things aren't compatible to do, which means that if when you hop back into KDE after using your window manager for a while, and you still have that environment variable to work, that's when things just go wrong, or you have to remove, the, or, you know, comment out the environment variable get that thing gone and then it works again and then if you hop back into a window manager you got to re-enable it. it's a mess so this is most a lot of my problems come from that but not all of them because i mean you've probably seen me do this on video like with my kino white video the other day that didn't have another window manager installed those problems were you know things that i experienced just with kde installed now some of that's going to be because of the kino white thing and the relationship between how uh, KDE install stuff and the immutable aspect of it, but I mean those aren't new issues for me. Like the settings app crashes for me almost every time I get into KDE for no reason, and that has nothing to do with the uh, theming stuff. I mean, and I mean, and that's a problem that's been going on for for me for like at least six months, and on multiple well, different distros. I uh, there's one thing about Kinoi. Kinoite has an issue. It's a, it's a known issue that ha they haven't fixed for God knows how long. It's uh, du during well, after installation or during installation. Sometimes you get the uh, 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 read only error, 
uh, it's not writable. It says it's not writable. Uh, it's, uh, the solution for that is leaving the time zone as is. Uh, you don't touch the, uh, the time zone, and then you click during the installation, you click next, 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 and everything will be okay. You set the time zone after installation. Uh, they haven't fixed that issue. I don't understand why. Uh, it, it's the same thing with, uh, with uh, KDE spin, uh, Fedora KDE spin. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on the time zone. Uh, uh, different distributions have different issues with KDE, but Arch, it's the most stable KDE experience I've had in a long time. Now, the issues I, uh, like I said before, are very small, annoying issues. Uh, for example, the, the, I don't know, uh, Nicolove, the, the developer who created the floating panel, uh, I talked to him and he was, I asked him, why is the, uh, the taskbar, uh, the panel keeps growing, uh, gaining a few pounds uh, every time I maximize a window. He was like, it's by, uh, it's by nature uh, because of the shadows and things. Now, latte dock, when you use the latte dock as a panel, that's when everything lines, begin, begun, uh, starts lining up. Uh, but unfortunately, latte dock is dead. Uh, yeah. And I, have, uh, I, I cried over it because if there was one a thing in KDE that was amazing, it was Latero. It was so flexible, it allowed me so much customization for my panel, my dock, everything. I was like, now it's dead. And he's Greek, like me. <laughs> I'm like, dude, which, uh, I asked him why. He was like, I have other projects, projects that will bring me more money than Latero ever will. So um, I agree. You know, when, when you need to put food on the table, you tend to go towards the thing that will put that food on the table, not towards the thing that won't. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's all good, but I hope that somebody will pick it up. And from what Nikolove said, somebody from the KDE team will pick it up. It just, it's a matter of time. Well, that's uh, good. That's good. I'm, glad, I'm glad somebody's going to take that up. Yeah. And I just updated the, the Latte Dog Git. So there is some action happening on the GitHub. That's good. Yeah. So let me so let me ask you this question: Why did you choose to create Zero Linux? What was your goal? Very good question. It's uh, very simple. The answer is very simple. Uh, I couldn't find the distro for me, and I know it's a common answer. Uh, so I had to create one, and I couldn't because I wasn't a developer, and I kept uh, so I kept looking. I, uh, and everybody knows that. Um, since I'm not a developer and I don't understand anything, I wanted something uh, that allowed me to do that the easy way. So it's like uh, going to sleep, dreaming of a tree that will give you money. So uh, I woke up one day and I was digging on the internet and I see Arco Linux. Okay. I start messing around. I start digging around and watching his videos and you know eric he puts out so many videos mm -hmm. uh even uh, if you watch them in series you start learning even if you, you don't understand anything you start learning without understanding uh, and I, I watched a four and a half hour video of him creating uh alci slash carly i was like just run the script in terminal and it will build the ISO. That's it. That's all I have to do. I tried it and it worked. So I built the Arco Linux B Plasma because I'm a KDE guy. It worked. So I was like, okay. And then two days or three days later, he created a video if you, uh, uh, showing us how to, uh, if you want to replace Plasma with something else or uh, GNOME with something else. I started learning from those videos. Long story short, Zero Linux was born from these two tools that he created. I just put, replaced his stuff with the stuff I want. And instead of adding KDE or Plasma, the, the whole meta package, I split it into separate files because I didn't want Discover because that's a piece of crap, uh, at least on Arch. Uh, uh, 
I replaced a lot of things. I removed a lot of things. I just added the things that mattered. And I started reading up each, uh, there, there's over a hundred packages. I started reading the description of each package to know which ones to add. And I started talking to the Endeavor guys, the Endeavor, uh, Joe from uh, Joe Campcard, whatever his, his last name is. Sorry if I butchered your name, Joe, last name, Joe. Uh, but uh, he started helping me. Uh, then the Garuda, some of the Garuda dev- uh, maintainers started helping me as well. Uh, so it was a collaborative effort because uh, I asked questions, I got the answers, and uh, Zero Linux is here. Quite simply, I just created because I don't, uh, I didn't find a distro for me, so I wanted to create one that suited my uh, my needs. Which basically, for me, a perfect distro is a distro that doesn't force anything on you. You had the total freedom to do whatever you want after installation. I couldn't find that. Uh, Manjaro forced uh, uh, their repositories on us. Uh, Endeavor OS, they had their, their way of doing things, which is very close to, to, to how I like to do things, but still, they, they offer too many desktops. And for me, offering anything in the installer is confusion galore. Uh, I, I just wanted an install that took two minutes to install because I have a bad internet. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's how Zero Linux was born. Uh, I wanted it a certain way. I couldn't find anything that did that. So I started building from building blocks, like Eric says, from different places. Endeavor OS, Manjaro, uh, uh, Arco, Garuda, uh, KOS. Mm-hmm. We're all, uh, it's bits and pieces from everywhere. I, don't, I didn't write a line of code. So don't, and I don't know how to use a lot of things. I just did it my way, the way I know things. If you ask me things about BDR, BTRFS or ButterFS, I have no clue. I know it has snapshots, but that's all I know about ButterFS. So if you ask me to support, if you chose ButterFS while installing Zero Linux, don't expect me to be able to help you. I can copy paste the link from ArchWiki and send it to you, but you can do that as well. So mm-hmm. my, uh, when it comes to support, uh, Zero Linux is more uh, on the lines of RTFM. Right. So KDE is going to be pretty much the yeah. game of town from now on, right? Okay. Um, that, was, that was one of my questions. Was there's not going to be no window managers or anything like that in the future, different ISOs? Well, here's the thing. Uh, Eric created something called the Arch Tweak Tool, Arch Linux Tweak Tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he supports a lot of distros with that tool, one of, one of them being Zero Linux. Uh, we collaborated on that. He asked me to modify Zero Linux so the Arch Linux tweak tool works with it. And I asked him to remove a few features from the tool so we don't have duplicate features. So uh, for window managers and other desktops, you will be able to install those via the Arch Linux tweak tool. There's no reason for me to maintain and support a separate ISO or a separate desktop environment or anything like that, because the Arch Linux Tweak tool exists. I will be mentioning it uh, at some point. Uh, but yeah, since that tool exists, I don't need to create that and do that. There's only things that you have to do on the KDE side, like you mentioned, uh, with uh, K5RCT or whatever, that, that file is very dangerous. That file, if you start modifying it and you use window managers, like you said, it's going to mess with things. Yes, that's the annoying part. But if you download Zero Linux just to install a window manager on top, just get a distro to, to, that already ships, like Archcraft, that already ships with window managers, to, mm-hmm. uh, tiling window managers and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean that you cannot do that on Zero Linux. Just be ready that uh, you cannot remove KDE, you can disable certain parts of it so it doesn't mess with the, the desktop environment or window manager that you choose to install and use, uh, but you, you can do it. It's doable. Nothing cannot be done. It, just be ready to, to do more work than other distros. Right. What about other features that you'd like to add in the future? Things that you're kind of on your dream list of things you'd like to add? Things like uh, I'd like to add to Zero Linux, nothing much. Uh, Zero Linux for now has reached the my vision. My vision has has been completed. 
we can always add a few tweaks and knickknacks here and there, but no more huge features. Uh, be simply because uh, if if I can raise extra money beyond the goal that I set in my fundraiser, because I currently have a fundraiser running uh, to pay to keep the lights on, because Lebanon is going through a power extreme power cuts. We only get six hours of power for six hours a day. So uh, if I raise more than the, the allotted amount, I will put that extra amount for the Steam Deck. Uh, because I'm thinking of putting zero Linux to the Steam Deck, because this whole idea of two gigabytes of home partition and immutable file system overriding everything you do on the desktop is annoying me. Mm. So maybe that, and uh, for the zero Linux for the Raspberry Pi, I already have a Raspberry Pi, but I need to learn and adapt myself to start understanding how the Raspberry Pi works when it comes to custom distros. But yeah, there are plans for the future for Zero Linux, but first I need to keep the lights on. <laughs> right, that makes sense. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some of the recent stuff that you've done and had to deal with. So let's get into the Grub issue. So that has been a big issue over the last few weeks, specifically with Arch Linux, but a couple others as well. So why don't you talk about your problems that you've had with Grub, what you've done to solve it, what you're... Uh, or not solve it, but work around it, I should say, um, yeah. and stuff like that. Well, uh, the Grub issue uh, has been an annoyance more than anything else. It's not a huge issue because there are other bootloaders out there. There's System D boot. You got uh, what's it called, the uh, Refined. Mm -hmm. You're free to switch to any of those. Uh, this is the beauty of Linux. That's what I really love about Linux over Windows. Windows, it's cr it, it craps out on you. Format reinstall, but with you, with uh, with Linux, uh, you, there's always a solution, a workaround, uh, such like the the one we applied on. Will we will apply on the September ISO, which is coming in two weeks. Uh, we may, we are maintaining our own version of Pro. Now we have to. Uh, we're pulling a Manjaro, as I call it. By holding it back, but they left us no other choice. Uh, for some odd reason, the issue is very simple. There's a it's a it's a miscommunication between the Arch maintainers and the the, the Grub. Uh, the Grub maintainers they're pushing commits to the Git as one does when working on a on a project. Uh, but for some reason, Arch decided to start sh shipping Git the Git package as a stable package. Unexplainable. No matter how many times we try to ask the, the Arch people, they keep replying, it's not, a, a, it's working, there's no issue. Uh, we, it's not our job, we're not paid to, to, to provide support for different distros out there, custom distros out there. Uh, those kind of replies. There's no issue, there's no issue, okay. First, first thing uh, is when it's not one single distro suffering from from these things, but it's multitude of distros. Uh, then there's something wrong. Uh, I don't blame the Grub guys. The Grub guys are doing their thing. They're pushing Git commits as one does and tests and before release. It's the miscommunication between them and Arch. And why do we have to suffer? I don't know. So I decided to package it up and call it zero grub instead of grub so it doesn't conflict with grub package. And it's going to be uh, shipped on the latest ISO and it's going to be version 206-5, which is not before they started shipping the Git commits. Some distros are shipping the, the latest stable Git version like uh, Manjaro, they're on the uh, R261 which is before all these issues started happening. I chose the non, the non Git version, but they both the same. Uh, not many things have changed. So yeah, from until the matter gets resolved, this is the workaround we have applied on Zero Linux. Uh, other issues, there weren't any major, uh, any other major issues uh, so far. 
uh, oh, yeah, there is one. Uh, did you notice, I don't know if you used Arch lately, but they decided to, you know how before on the Arch ISO that's shipped on the, uh, that you download from the Arch website, uh, their uh, live environment, their uh, bootloader that they used to use to, for their live environment was systemd boot. Now they switched to Grub. I don't understand why, but it's just Arch being Arch. And that's it. Arch is, by nature, what you make of it. They give you a very minimalistic uh, code uh, uh, or base, very minimalistic base, and you shape it into whatever you want. They're not responsible if you the, the thing that you shaped using it is faulty or broken. You, uh, you are the one who makes the decisions, who, know, who should understand what works with what and what, how to build things together. If you put things incompatible with other things, you're going to end up with an unstable system. Uh, but lately, Arch has been take, uh, taking questionable decisions. So uh, this is when it's up to us as maintainers to do uh, to to do some research and make things work. Mm -hmm. It makes our life, uh, our job, a little bit more difficult, but it's still fun. Linux is fun. That's why we use it. It is fun. Uh, the thing with the grub, the grub. The whole grub scenario thing is is that it definitely is one of those things that made people think worse about Arch, even if their experience wasn't with the vanilla Arch ISO, right? If they were like using Arco or they're using Zero Linux and they had this experience, they're not going to think really. I mean, they'll think, well, yeah, this is a Zero Linux problem, but more it's that they understood that this thing came down from. Arch and it's especially when they get online and do their googling and say like oh this is affecting all these distros it the number of tweets and things on reddit I saw well like, this is the reason why nobody likes Arch or people can't stand Arch's instability or Arch is unstable things like that it, it did not do well to help yeah, their it, it, put a in their, uh, it put a dent in their reputation uh, but Again, I do say, you have to be smart about it. You cannot use Arch Linux unless you know that it's going to be as unstable as you make it to be. Sometimes, or in rare cases, this happens, like the grub issue, uh, because Arch made decisions that are questionable. But uh, most of the time, Arch is what you make it to be. It's just a base. You don't have grub on it. You don't have anything on it. You just got a base. You can use it as is and just install a few packages and keep it as a TTY. But when uh, the moment you decide to start installing desktop environments and window managers and display managers and this and that, and you, and you, des uh, you decide it's unstable, well, it's because you made it unstable. You it must have installed. It's always, most of the time, it's not 100% of the time, but it's at least... 70 to 80 percent of the time user error because they install something incompatible with something else you have to read and yes when you start using arch be prepared to do a lot of reading now you're going to read the equivalent of two or three books to, to to start understanding arch the right way uh but uh it's how you build it and then you uh, if you uh for example, uh, I created Zero Linux and something happens, the, the responsibility falls on me because I am the one who, who built Zero Linux uh, and, I, and I accept this responsibility because I decided to include this package, that package, and I put it all together. Yes, I have to provide support for everything that I put together, but only what I put together what am I held responsible for. When users begin adding on top of it, uh, more desktop environments, more window managers, more compositors. They want to test another kernel and whatever. I cannot provide support for all these variables because I am not the Arch Wiki. I, I don't have all the information in the world to provide all the answers. I don't have all the answers. Uh, plus, add to the fact that I am not a developer. Uh, the only thing I have tested is what I ship with Zero Linux and the packages that I have on my repositories that come from the AUR. 
I have tested every single one of these packages, most at least, 98% uh, of these packages. There are always a few packages that uh, I, I get requests for. I just build from the AUR, push it to my repo, and it's up to the user to use because he's the one who wants to use that tool and he must have used it prior. Uh, I just built it for him because he doesn't want to uh, spend the time waiting for it to build from the AUR. So uh, there are some packages that I did not test, but most of them I did. Uh, so yeah, I accept responsibility for everything I include on Zero Linux, but anything outside Zero Linux, I'm not responsible for. So it's up to the user to start learning. I do my best to point them to the right direction. Yes, this is I can do that. It's easy because I understand where to go and where to search. Uh, I give them uh, the links, and if, uh, sometimes I go above and beyond. Like today, uh, I have a. I have a person on, on the team, he's the manager. Uh, he manages the team. Uh, he created a video today that I uploaded to, my, to our channel uh, that helps users switch to system deboot because of the grub issue. So we do what we can to supply the users with the right information. Beyond that, it's up to them to how they implement it and how they use it. Uh, we create, uh, the I take full, uh, use of the forums and the only uh, point for the forums is not to provide support this is on social media because you get immediate support the forums are only there to uh, you have a question you want to know how to do a certain thing we post a guide on the forum that you will be able to read and go through but that's a guide that's copy pasted from somebody somewhere else it doesn't mean that we have tried everything uh, so he created the video because he tried, he tested the thing, uh, and he shows it on video. For things that we don't know how to do, we just copy paste the guide, there will be no video, unless we want to make a video. But otherwise, it's just a, a copy paste from the ArchWiki sometimes, uh, w with, it's a dumbed down version uh, of the ArchWiki, so everyone understands it. Sometimes I do that, I just make it noob friendly, because the ArchWiki is, it's a manual from space, I call it. Uh, so yeah, we do our best to provide everything uh, via the forums. Uh, otherwise, it's up to the user. Uh, RTFM, read the freaking manual. We create sometimes the manuals for you, but read them. Don't say, I want to do this, and you expect us. Don't expect us to, to remote into your system and do the thing for you. Because sometimes I feel users expect us to do that. So yeah, we we do our best. Uh, that's uh, we 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 do we do workarounds when we can. We apply things when we can. But other than that, learn to read. Sometimes, like I created the end user agreement on the website before the user to download uh, Zero Linux, telling them this is Arch Linux. Expect issues. Uh, don't go d dive to the deep end before you learn how to swim. Test it on a virtual machine. See how it goes. See if it's what you like. Then install on a on your main machine. Don't install it immediately on your main machine. A lot of users install it immediately on their main machine. They don't know how to use Arch, what Arch is, and all hell breaks loose. Mm. Like, yeah, I told you. Did you read? No, I didn't. I just grabbed the download from X and Y website. I'm like, yeah, well, read, then come back to me. Sometimes it's annoying, but uh, we do our best to keep a smile on everybody's face. I think that there's a, I mean, this is just my opinion, but I think that there's an inherent understanding or at least an assumption amongst people who download Arch-based distros that they're going to be easier than Arch. So I don't know that that's necessarily a true across the board, but it seems like that's an assumption that a lot of people make i know that i make that this you know assumption a lot of the times that it's going to i think we can blame it on manjaro because they were the first on the scene where they tried to make a distribution that was arch but you know more stable easier to install has pre-made out and pre-built pre-built options you know and then you had you know garuda and antergos back in the day and arco and now zero and like they make the same assumptions that they're all kind of the same in that they're no. supposed to be easier than ours, right? That's what I wrote on the website. That's what I meant by that message. Zero Linux is not 
trying to make things easier. It's just shipping you with a desktop environment that you can shape as you wish, but to shape it, you have to have the knowledge. I'm not going to give you the knowledge. You have to learn how to get the knowledge by yourself. I just shipped it with a desktop environment and an easy way to install it rather than doing it the arch way because people stay away from arch because of the arch way, mostly. So I made it easy to install with a desktop environment to get you started with a welcome tool that will help guide you uh, to do stuff on Zero Learns. Uh, but yeah, I am guilty of the same thing. I When I went into Linux, I went with, like everybody else did, Mint, right? Everybody goes with Mint. Uh, but it was so boring. Like I told Chris like the stack the other day, it's so boring. It never fails. Well, not never. It mostly doesn't fail. It always failed for me on the locale because it was detecting Arabic because I'm a Lebanon. But other than that, it was working just fine, but it was so boring. I couldn't. The type of customization I was able to do with it is Windows level customization, not Linux level of custom, unless I wanted to read manual upon manual and just to be able to download widgets and see what they do and whatever. Uh, so, but Manjaro, I love Manjaro. It's, it's, it's three years running on my home theater system. Stable hasn't given me a single error message besides the signature keys of Pac-Man. <laughs> but other than that, not a single error message. It's running Plex. And every time I want to, I cannot keep it turned on because no electrical power. But uh, whenever I need to watch a movie or a, t or a TV show, I just turn it on, go to my uh, Android Shield in the living room and watch a movie. It's all being served by that system running Manjaro. And it's been running it for three years. And I only update it once every three weeks. Every time I update it, there's uh, two gigabytes of updates. So far, no issues. And I have packages from the AUR. So, uh, But Manja I like Manjaro and the way they do things. Uh, uh, I mean, by the, the package holding things. Uh, because like now with Grub, because they're holding Grub to an older version, they did not suffer the issue. No, none of their users suffered the issue. So this is when this package holding comes into uh, fruition. It, it, it becomes useful. Sometimes holding packages for, sometimes they hold packages like kernels for up to a month. Uh, that's too long. But yeah, uh, don't expect... Uh, Arch to be simple, not because, not because it, uh, it has a desktop environment that means automatically it's simple. Arch Linux is not simple. Uh, Arch Linux is, is all about learning. Zero Linux is as well, because you're going to learn how to do everything to shape the system the way you want. Arch Linux, same. Uh, uh, Endeavor OS. They also ship you a minimalistic uh, installation. Whatever desktop environment you select, it's a minimal desktop environment, or same thing with window manager. So we are not trying to do the job for you, but we are just making it easier to get up and running. Then how you want to shape it, you have to read. Learn to read. Do you foresee a future where you're holding back more packages than just the grub and maybe even creating your own repos or anything back? back. Uh, uh, oh, you mean hold back? Uh, no, I don't see holding, uh, holding back more packages than I need to. Uh, now it's only with Grub. It's only when we need to hold a package to preserve our sanity and our stability. Okay. All right, so we, before we started recording, you were talking about how you were transitioning over to more flat packs on the system or using oh, okay. Flatpaks, period. So let's talk about that for a little while. Why have you chosen to do that? How are you implementing it? What Flatpaks are you uh, using and things like that? And why? Okay. Uh, Flatpaks, uh, transitioning to Flatpaks. Uh, when I say transitioning to Flatpaks, I don't mean this is the only thing we're going to offer. Uh, but this is what our tool, which is the tool that will help you, uh, guide you, uh, or... Uh, get started, help you get started with Zero Linux. 
uh, it will uh, offer more flat packs than regular packages. The regular packages are just packages that I built personally from the AUR or related to the distro or uh, that otherwise are not available as flat packs. And sometimes they're available as flat packs and are uh, Arch Linux uh, uh, packages. This is where I had to make the decision. Some of them I chose as regular packages, like, uh, uh, for example, uh, Libre, uh, no, uh, what's it called? The Office Suite, uh, what's it called? LibreOffice. Uh, LibreOffice, I selected as a flat, uh, as a regular package over a flat pack. It exists as a flat pack, but theming doesn't work very well. Uh, we got, we, uh, we uh, speaking of theming, uh, we were able to include a patch in Zero Linux that allowed Flatpaks to use the system theme, at least the default system theme, which is laying Zero Linux. Uh, if you want to use a separate theme, a different theme, there's a guide on the forum that will show you how to do that. Uh, but uh, sometimes I have to make a decision. This is very hard. I have to. Sorry about I that. I have to. Uh, I have to test the uh, both of them, the regular package and the flat pack, see which one works best, and then I make the decision. Uh, but for now, most everything is offered as flat packs, Discord, uh, Signal, and every little thing uh, is offered. And now Lutris is available as a flat pack, finally. Uh, so it, this will be offered as a flat pack. OBS flat pack, and you would agree the OBS, the flat pack version of OBS is the best one. Uh, so we're transitioning to flat packs where, where we can via our tool. But if you want the regular package, you're free to do so. Just install it via Pamac or Pacman in the terminal. It's up to you which version you want to use. But our tool will offer more flat packs over uh, because it it help we we target. Uh, the, the, our goal is simplicity, sim, uh, simplicity uh, and ease of use, and no dependency, dependency help. Because Arch has been known to move a lot of dependencies from the uh, from their repositories to to the AUR, breaking some packages. So uh, to get over that, flat packs to the rescue. And sometimes uh, uh, some dependencies disappear; they no longer exist, nor on the AUR, nor on Arch, because the Developer uh, decided to call it to call it quits. That's where flatbacks come in. Uh, another reason uh, scenario where flatbacks come in, um, where uh, as, as a, as a package works better with an older version of the dependency rather the latest than the latest version. That's where flatback comes in. It keeps the old version of the of the thing containerized within the flatback. So the only issue with the flatback is the large size. If you decided to install uh, a certain, like zero Linux on a, on a small partition that's 60 gigs or something like that, 30 gigs or 60 gigs, then yeah, this is where things, uh, the, the cracks start showing with flat packs because they will use, use up a lot of space. And there are large packages for people like myself on capped internet. Uh, but there's a nice thing with flatpacks now. It's they're slowly transitioning to uh, 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 incremental updates. So yeah. instead of re-downloading the whole package all over again, it just downloads the the changed parts. Delta, so instead yeah. of download taking 500 megabytes, it will download only 20 or 30 megabytes. Sometimes I don't understand this issue with flatpack. When I'm installing a flatpack package, it says that the package size is 370 megabytes. It reaches 370, it says 380 over 370, 390, yeah, 400 yeah. over, I'm like. I've seen that too, okay. I don't know why it does that. The, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. I have but... a feeling that's more, to let, I think that that has to do with the, just the way they're displaying it, that there's an error or something there, that they're displaying the wrong size or something, because obviously it can't be bigger. I mean, it, yeah, it has true. to be a bug of some it's, kind. It, or it's uh, it's their uh, terminal installation thing that's not detecting the correct final size. But they work on my system. 
um, I'm glad to say on my system, it's 90% of the apps I use are all flat packs. <coughs> uh, I wanted to ask you, I mean, my turn to ask you, uh, what do you think of flat packs and the permissions thing where some apps like, for example, uh, Discord, I noticed that, I learned that by myself, uh, like chat clients, when you want to, for example, use Spectacle, uh, take a screenshot of the system, uh, uh, and you want to paste it in the chat in any social media app, it will not allow you if it's a flat pack unless you give it the right permissions in flat seal. What do you think about the whole permission thing and flat seal? Is it, do you think new users, it's easy for new users to grasp the idea or not? Well, I kind of, because you remember th this thing is very much like what you'd experience on a phone, right? You have to give all your apps that you download from like Android or iOS, you have to give those permissions, right? So it's the same thing. The difference is, is that Flat Seal is so disintegrated to the rest of Flat Hub. You have to download it yourself and you have to know that it exists. You know, once you know that it exists and you realize what it's for, it's fine. But it's getting past that hurdle. That's why I, I mean, and this is going to be the biggest problem with it is that because of the people who actually develop flat pack itself they're very much just going to ever ship flat pack but i think and i would argue that if you are going to include flat pack on your system at all on your distro it should come with flat seal installed pre-installed it just it should that's it, what it does it, your Linux has flat seal pre-installed it, it shouldn't it it because if you don't, some, you're going to have, I mean, I can hear this. Know. I was the user to know. Yeah, I mean, you you get this, I mean, I see this question in my Discord all the time. Like, why why doesn't this work? Why can't I see anything other than the downloads folder? Because by default, it will see the downloads folder, but it won't see anything else, which still doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you're giving them some access to the home directory, you're already creating an, a way in. So it should be either all or none by default. But I agree. They they just have this. I don't. I don't see a feature where the flat pack guys themselves send out flat seal automatically. Like, but especially on like there Fedora. Is... Like on Fedora, flat pack is the like the future, right? That's what they want you to use because I mean they're integrating it and building Silver Blue and Kino and stuff like that. Flat packs is the direction that they're wanting to go. But you don't see any indication of them including flat seal by default. It, it it's kind of had been pull like pulling teeth in order to get them to even enable flat hub by default. You know, so yeah, there's that. But there are some I noticed lately there are some applications specifically. I noticed this with Lutris <laughs> and Fileville. <Brazil. clears throat> Bless you. Uh, there, there's a, uh, there's uh, with Fazilla and uh, Lutris and uh, Heroic Game Launcher. I know I pay attention. I pay attention to the terminal output, which I recommend a lot of users do because this is what will make or break some system. Sometimes, if you don't pay attention to your terminal output and you don't see a warning, a certain package uh, displayed during installation, during the post installation. And you reboot your system and you see your system broken like uh, what happened with grub now they have a message that displays that you need to run a certain tool a certain command if you don't read that and you don't run these commands and you end up with a broken system you only have yourself to blame because you didn't pay attention to the terminal output but anyway uh what i wanted to say is uh, i install flatbacks via terminal i like that because i like to read verbose output i noticed that those applications, they ship with uh, different permissions than regular packages. Uh, there's a command that runs before the, uh, the installation, uh, so prepare in the prepare phase. Uh, it gives, it applies uh, some, some tweaks to the to, to flatback. Uh, it tells the flatback to give permissions to those tools to the home directory. So if there's a part, it tells you, uh, it shows like FileZilla, I installed it. I, I used to use the regular package. I decided to uninstall it, install the flat pack. When I opened the flat pack, 
it automatically saw my settings, which were in my .config folder. .config, uh, .config FileZilla. It detected my usernames and my logins and everything. So uh, this package, for example, already has access from the get-go to your home directory and .config. Uh, uh, there are a lot of packages, yeah, and it can be done by the packager uh, of flat packs, of certain flat packs. Uh, it's up to them to decide if they should give permission or not. I feel, like you said, they should uh, each app, like for example, Discord, Signal, Telegram, and stuff like that. They should ship with the with, with access to the at least the home directory from the get go. Not as, ask the user to give them access via flat seal and do this whole circle just to be able to use them correctly. From the things that I've read, the goal eventual goal behind flat pack itself is going to be to remove the ability for developers to even include that support for the home directory that it's going to have to be something that it, the user is going to have to grant um because they want it to be completely like i mean it, it's just like you would with any application you have on a phone where the system is immutable they want you to have give the user that control and eventually the developer just won't be able to do it because it's only going to be sandboxed right the thing is then what's going to be interesting and what i think that might end up happening is that developers just get to the point where flat seal is a dependency so like if you download the audacity flat pack there is a second flat pack that comes along with that as the codex right obs has yeah. a couple uh yeah. dependencies it wouldn't surprise me in the future if some apps that require that permit the permissions and stuff just require flat seal to be installed um or downloaded yeah, alongside and it as a dependency like some packages have dependencies that nvidia driver since uh, uh some packages specifically gaming packages like lutris and heroic uh, game launcher have the nvidia driver as a dependency so ship uh, hero, uh, I mean, ship flat seal as a dependency at least. Uh, the way I have it right now, Zero Linux will ship in in a upcoming release. Will ship with uh, with flat seal pre-installed. Uh, but it's the user has to find it. Mm -hmm. The user won't know where to find it unless I put it in the dock. I noticed a lot of my users are new new to Linux users, so. Uh, they won't know that there's something called flat seal that grants permissions to their applications. Uh, I agree with you when you say uh, applications should start integrating a toggle somewhere to launch flat seal and apply the permissions. Uh, because otherwise the user won't know. Or at least start shipping applications with permission toggles within the application, uh, well within the flat. It'd be interesting to see it just be like, instead of having a separate application, which I mean, the separate application is fine. That can be like the settings panel or whatever. But if your application requires permissions, just have it be a pop-up or something like that at the beginning. Like here, w would you like to access, grant these permissions, you know, and then it, it's done. That'd be the, the, be the proper way to do it. Yeah. So, uh, and because here's my issue with Flat Seal. Uh, there's so many toggles in mm -hmm. Flat Seal users might start clicking toggles left and right and breaking and uh, ending up uh, with a broken app or uh, uh, giving the wrong permissions, uh, starting opening holes they shouldn't be opening. Uh, flat seal is a little bit too, comp too complex uh, for, the reg for the new user. Uh, there's a lot of toggles I, at first, did not understand what they did until I started messing with them in, in a virtual machine, of course. They should hide some of them behind, like, a drop-down or something like that. Like, here are the main ones. You know, like home directory, uh, you know, access to the camera and video, things like that. And then the more complicated ones that most people aren't going to need, those should be, like, behind, in behind a drop-down. That's going to keep the majority of people from or, going or to Or hide it under a, a, a hidden section called advanced. Yeah. A warning somewhere. Don't mess with those unless you know what you're doing. Uh, use the scare tactic. 
just to, 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 to not have regular users mess with the wrong setting. There should definitely be a warning or something that pops up at the beginning. Like if you mess yeah, with these, the way you know, they have it right now, it's everything in front of you. You can just toggle everything. I think <laughs> that the reason why they did that, though, is similar to the reason why a lot of people expect them to people just to kind of know what's going on or to read the manual is that, you know, they, yeah, they, this... they expect once you have found that flat seal exists that you have some kind of knowledge over what it does um which isn't anywhere near true but i think that that's the assumption that the developer has made this is this is this is what a lot of distros have uh this is a mistake that a lot of distros make uh they they, they assume too much they assume the users know what they're doing they assume that the uh, users are experienced. They assume that they have used that application before. So no, don't assume anything. When you create a distro and you want to maintain a distro, stop assuming on, uh, uh, on behalf of the user. The only thing you should assume is that users don't know how to use the application. So put everything and anything you can to help the user guide the user if not uh, a tool just create a guide on the forum or in as i did in my welcome uh, tool as i'll be doing in my upcoming welcome tool there'll be links there'll be an faq section and there will be links to to related threads on the forum even uh, for example now uh, this is something big uh, and i think i will thank the user uh, vlad uh, for pointing me to the right direction but uh, you know what MHWD is, right? Yeah. Zero Linux will be shipping with it uh, in the upcoming release, finally. Uh, but it's not the way people expect it to be shipped. Uh, Zero Linux is the installer Calamares. I'm not using it to give users access to download things during installation. All that just introduces issues. But there will be a button in the tool post install to install the drivers. Mesa will handle the installation up to the desktop, Mesa slash Nouveau for NVIDIA users. Uh, then there will be a toggle in the, uh, a button in the tool that they click if they have NVIDIA or uh, AMD Pro, the proprietary GPUs. They, there's a button for proprietary drivers and a button for non-proprietary, uh, free drivers, open source drivers. If they have an NVIDIA card, they click the non-free button, they click on it, it will detect what GPU they have and in, uh, installs all the relevant stuff for them. Uh, but I assumed that the user doesn't know. So I added buttons under each, to uh, two buttons for hybrid users that will send them to a guide, uh, not a guide, but informational thread on the forums that I dumped down to, to a user understandable level, uh, uh, and another toggle for how to use Optimus QT or Optimus Manager. So uh, there are buttons to help the users. I assume nothing. All I do is guide the you provide anything I can to help user get started to get less questions support questions on the uh, on discord or telegram so uh, distros should do this like manjaro already does it they have uh, guides and buttons on their welcome tool as well some distros do but a lot of other distros should start hopping on the bandwagon because uh, if you start assuming too much you're going to get too many questions and you're going to be uh, providing support where you can be and, uh, and spending time on support rather than spending time on making your tool or distro better. That's all that's uh, that, that annoys me sometimes uh, and stop expecting. Uh, and I ask the user, stop expecting uh, distro maintainers to do all the work for you. That's a small little hint, uh, annoyance I have. Uh, both ends. The users uh, expect too much and the maintainers uh, assume too much. Makes sense. Okay, so yeah. let's talk a little bit before we hop out of here about what your next step is. So right now you do not have 
a ISO to download. So talk about when we're going to see that um, and the things that are surrounding that situation. And you, it's because of the grub, but talk about when we're going to see it. All right. Uh, the, the reason I took out the current ISO from being available is because it's an old ISO from May. Uh, we, our release schedule, uh, sorry, it's from June, uh, but uh, our release schedule is every three months. So uh, from June, so the next release is this month. It's on the 15th of every, th uh, every three months on the 15th. Uh, it will be available in two weeks, less than two weeks. We're on the third, so 12 days. Uh, and the changes are not big uh, visually. The only visual new uh, thing you're going to get is uh, the new wallpaper. <laughs> And we switched uh, away from Latte Doc because it's a dead project for now. Uh, uh, we switched to, uh, for the doc, it's Plank, and back to the uh, KDE panel, floating panel on top, uh, uh, and our tool. The, everything else is under the hood. So now, you're, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to get the MHWD, which will help you install the right drivers for your GPUs, at least. Uh, uh, the ISO will uh, come sh will ship with a flat seal for flat pack users. Uh, it's going to ship with all the input uh, drivers, including fingerprint support, all the printer drivers. So it supports out of the box all the printers you need. Uh, we've optimized the KDE to use uh, 600 megabytes on cold boot, which prior it was using around 900. So we shaved 300 megabytes off of the cold boot usage. Uh, and what else did we do? Uh, that's about it. Uh, it was a lot of under the hood fixes, uh, tweaks, uh, technical stuff. But what the user should, should understand that we have back Grub because of the Grub issue. Uh, we were given no other alternative. Uh, Arch is sticking with the uh, Git release as stable scenario. We prefer to offer something stable rather than something bleeding edge like Git, when it comes, when it, especially, uh, especially when it comes to a bootloader, which is an essential part of the system. Uh, so we held back Grub. Uh, if you disagree with that, you're entitled to disagree. You can still in, uh, remove the package we installed, the version we in, included in Zero Linux, and replace it with a bleeding edge version. Just uh, you do it at your own risk. Uh, it's not something we're going to provide support for. We did what we can. It's up to you to agree or disagree. Uh, we put forth all the. We will be putting forth all the warnings, necessary warnings. Uh, but yeah. Zero Linux will uh, is and will always remain uh, a stability first uh, distro with KDE, uh, and you're free to do with it whatever you wish. Just don't uh, think that uh, we know too much. Just by being a maintainer doesn't mean that we know the the whole world of Linux and we know how to do everything related to Linux. You're gonna be uh, expect to be to receive the I don't know message to to a support request because we don't know a, a, a heck of a lot. We just know what Zero Linux uses. That beyond that, we don't know anything, uh, and none of us are developers. We uh, outsource developers to do stuff for us. We don't do anything in house. Uh, the, the developer working on our current, uh, the working on the upcoming version of our tool is Ramkashi OS. I, I requested help. He answered. He answered the call, and they're all. Do, we're all doing it pro bono. And uh, I wanna, I wanna say one last thing before we hop out of here. Uh, Zero Linux development will not, will not stop. Uh, but. There is a small issue now uh, since I'm from Lebanon, and Lebanon is going through a tremendous bad times right now. 
huge bad times. I don't know how you call it. The worst times of all times. We're getting only six hours of power a day. Uh, so this will this power is going to go in a few... I don't know. What time is it? Okay, so it's going to go in two hours. Uh, we're, uh, so we're asking for support to pay to be able to pay the bills because... Where uh, the bills are increasing, and we're having a harder and harder time to to keep developing with the with no lights on. Uh, so if you can, if you're not forced to, if you can, uh, I hope you can add the uh, fundraiser at the bottom in the descri video description. The links for both your website, your Patreon, and your fundraiser will be in the video description. Yes. Cool. Thanks. Uh, uh, it's just raising funds to be able to pay to keep the light to keep the lights on, uh, because we just received the latest bill, and it's ten million of our <laughs> currency, which equates to three hundred fifty dollars. And without a job, that's going to be hard to pay. Uh, with the current situation, where the 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 salary is one hundred eighty dollars and rent is five hundred, do the math. So we. Uh, Zero Linux is asking for your support to keep the lights on and to keep the because I want to make this a full time, full time thing. Uh, if you want Zero Linux to continue, we need your support. With that, I uh, think I have said everything. Uh, Linux, it's just users. When you choose a, 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 uh, when you select an Arch based distro, whatever it may be, minus Manjaro, uh, which isn't Arch. Just expect bugs, expect a lot of reading, and learn how to do your own research because not everyone has the answers. There's, there's the creators of, the, uh, of Arch, specifically the Arch Wiki, use it. And if it's too technical for you, ask someone to dumb it down for you. But do your own research. Don't, don't, don't expect things to be easy with Arch. Arch is uh, is cool, is awesome, but for the nerds, not for the people who want something that works right out of the box. It's uh, the only thing that works right out of the box with no issues is macOS, and we don't want to end up on macOS, do we? No, we don't. Okay, so uh, Zero Linux is available at zerolinux.xyz. Those links will be in the video description along with the fundraiser and the. Patreon, if you are interested in supporting Dark Zero, you can download his ISO starting on the 15th of September, and you can obviously support him monetarily through the links in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linuxcast. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time.